you should do college debate. That's what today's video is about. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the transfer rate, right, of folks who competed in high school in competitive debate formats, regardless of those formats, uh, and then go on to do some format of debate in college is exceptionally low. And there's a lot of driving factors for that. Uh, I would say one of the biggest ones that I frequently hear about and have seen talked about or even sort of revealed through analyses is that a significant number of people who do debate in high school are doing debate because <laughs> their parents or themselves want them to go to some college and they view debate as just a path to getting into college and not something to pursue once they are at those colleges. And I mean, this is definitely true from my experience in the private debate coaching industry. Uh, at a number of academies I worked at, maybe 40% of people would actually compete. And they'd come to practice every single week and they just wouldn't ever go to a tournament, right? We couldn't convince them to go to a tournament, even though it was part of the package and all that kind of stuff, because for them, it was just about having something they could put on a resume or on an application, I suppose, and not actually about the activity itself. But that's not really our audience, right? I can't imagine there's a lot of you who are not either enjoying debate or interested in debate or at least like the competition offered by debate, something about the activity. If you're spending time watching Proteus Debate Academy, ostensibly, that is because you like doing debate. And yet, I would wager that the majority of our audience does not do college debate of those who have transferred to go on to college. And what I want to really talk about today in this video is just that I think you should, because there's a lot of significant differences between how debate happens at the college level and how it happens at the high school level. And I just kind of want to talk about a few of those and then, you know, sort of advocate for college debate more broadly. So the first thing that I want to talk about, because again, I've, I've worked with a lot of high school students and talked to them about the process and sort of the misgivings they have about what college debate is like and how it'll be the same as high school is number one, the judging in college is significantly better. That is because pretty much, unless you're doing IPDA, the least qualified person who will ever judge you at a debate tournament is someone who has a master's degree in like communication and who either competed in speech or debate or is a speech or debate coach at some university or some college. That alone makes a significant difference because one of the big issues with having like parent judges and things like that in high school is it can be very discouraging because you think you're working on a skill set or you've done really good research or you've made more effective arguments and these people haven't been trained to be effective judges. And as a result, things that otherwise won't matter as much uh, make the decision, right? Something as simple as like, oh, I like the way their ties matched or I thought that they they sounded better, quote unquote, right? Or they were more aggressive. And, and I really was into that. Uh, in college, frankly, if you had a lot of debate tournaments, policy debate tournaments and parley debate tournaments, a lot of people would make fun of you for wearing a suit, uh, at least on the national circuit. The community college level, there's a lot of suits, but like the those kinds of things, like how you're dressed or whatever, uh, don't matter nearly as much because the judges know how to flow and they understand the activity. So the number one thing I want to say is the judging is very different. The second thing is, at the vast majority of programs, it's almost entirely fully funded. What I mean by that is, I know a number of high school students who've reached out to us over the years who've said they want to do debate, but they're struggling because if they want to compete for their school, they have to like put the money up, or they have to convince their parents to pay for it, or maybe they can only go to one tournament because of uh, this, that, or the other. But the difference in college is that even if you're at like a community college, and I really do encourage folks who, um, you know, can go to community colleges to go to community colleges. Uh, but bottom line, like that stuff is paid for, right? Your travel to the tournament is paid for. Your entries at the tournament are paid for. Your hotel at the tournament is paid for. And all of those things make a massive difference. I, I think I've said this before, but my entire life, I grew up like relatively uh, low income and I've never been on a plane in my entire life until I was like 22 or 21 and Diablo Valley College, a school I now work at, 
paid to put me on a plane to fly down to a tournament in Southern California. And for me, that was really transformative, right? And, and, and I just think that people need to understand that with that said, like, yeah, forensics affords you great educational opportunities, but also great travel opportunities and sort of cultural experiences from being able to travel and go to different schools and meet other folks. And it's actually paid for almost, in my experience, pretty much every school I'm aware of pays for all of, if not a significant portion of the competition and the travel and the judges and all of those kinds of things. So I think that is just something to be aware of. The third thing that I will mention is that while there are still disparities between really well-funded programs and those programs that aren't really well-funded, what I would say is I came into college debate with zero high school or middle school experience. I was in my second year of community college when I found out about debate. I joined the team and I was not very good at first. And by the end of my career, me and my partner had been the rank one team in the country twice. We made it to national semifinals twice. Um, I've coached a lot of successful teams or relatively successful teams and competitors, depending on how you want to look at that. And I did that with no background and just by working with people, right? And just finding a coach who was, or several coaches, honestly, who were really good to me. And I guess all I'm trying to say is that in high school, it can kind of feel like, well, I don't go to this school. Or I don't go to that school. So I'll never be in one of those deep rounds. But in college, like a community college person has won the national championship of LD. Community college team has won the national championships of the NPDA. And I think that that sort of difference, at least in those kind of events, flattens to a certain degree. Um, you know, in LD in college, Western Kentucky has been more or less the best team in the country for, I don't even know how long, at least a decade, it seems like. And you would hear about Western Kentucky and it's like, oh, it's the machine and they have all these things and they like have a coach who's just a cross ex coach and like all these kinds of different situations, right? You'd always hear like kind of like rumors about what made them so special. Like they were like the Russians in Rocky IV or something. But now that I have a student who goes there uh, and I've talked to friend of mine, John Salmon, who won the national championship there. Like every single person I know who's actually gone to Wiki is like, no, nah, dude, we just work a lot. There's no like real secret thing. There's not like some secret drill they teach you or secret sauce or whatever. We just work really hard. And because of that, uh, programs in college debate can be successful despite not having like a long history. Lewis and Clark College won LD Nationals last year. They've only been doing LD as a school for three, maybe four years, period. Kansas City, Kansas Community College has won LD Nationals and won Parley Nationals. And so all I'm trying to say is, even if you're coming into debate with zero experience, you just happen to stumble upon this video, there is no reason why if you work really hard, you can't become a very successful debater uh, over a long enough period of time, right? You get a lot of eligibility once you're in college. The fourth thing I will say is there are certainly scholarship opportunities that are available to people. Uh, obviously, I received a scholarship to the University of the Pacific where I uh, competed for my scholarship doing Parley and Lincoln Douglas debate, but Pacific also had speech scholarships. Uh, I get reached out to fairly frequently by other coaches. Um, I'll just name one of them in particular because uh, I think they'd be fine with it. But uh, Ashton Knuckles Cuevas at San Diego State University is constantly, as, as a community college person, talking to someone who's at a university. She's always looking for people, it seems like, to join the team and see if she can potentially help them with scholarship funds or whatever that might be. But that's certainly not an unheard of thing beyond that. Like Lewis and Clark gives out scholarships. Western Kentucky gives out scholarships. That's what Tanya did, obviously. And all I'm trying to say is that debate can not only be a very educational thing for you in the sense that you'll learn research skills and you'll get to meet people and you'll test yourself academically and competitively. But for some folks like me and like Tanya, like it just lets you pay for school when you otherwise wouldn't have been able to do so. And if you're someone like me or like my current students where you start at a community college and you're just trying to figure out how you're going to get school paid for at all, I feel very confident. And obviously there's kind of a unique situation at DVC where we happen to have me as a coach and I have a lot of national experience and I have some connections with folks from just being a competitor and, and whatever. But I feel fairly confident that if I work with a student for two years at my community college and they take it seriously and they do the work, someone's going to give them a debate scholarship because, uh, you know, we, we can just get them to the level they need to be and the level of responsibility and dedication they need to be. And I guess all I'm trying to say is that 
for those of you who are struggling with those things, who are in community college and just trying to figure things out, debate can be a path forward for you. And certainly it's not going to cure everything, but uh, I think it can be very helpful overall. I guess the last thing I'd say is that there is definitely a community in college, not just at community colleges, but in the college debate circuit, you kind of end up knowing everyone who does the same format as you for the most part. You see them at these tournaments and you hang out with them and they become your friends and your contacts and there's discussion groups and things of that nature. And everyone's an adult, right? We're more mature than we were when we were kids. And a lot of people, why they get out of debate is they feel like they're being bullied or looked down upon or whatever it might be. And just so much less of that happens at the college level. In my mind, college debate is basically all of the best things about high school debate, plus several more other benefits, and without pretty much any of the significant downsides. So, I think you should do college debate. Specifically and selfishly, I think you should do NPDA debate, parliamentary debate, because I think it's a phenomenal format, and it's had dwindling participation and for me, it completely changed my life. And, and I really do think it's one of the more accessible debate formats you can get into and hopefully earn yourself a scholarship. But just do debate. Debate's good. I don't care if it's LD, it's policy, it's parley, it's IPDA, whatever it might be. You want to keep testing those skills. And I just hope people realize that it doesn't have to end when you finish high school. And it doesn't just have to be something that you're using to pad a resume. Uh, it can be something that transforms your life that helps you get a degree, in my case, gets multiple degrees, became literally my profession. And I just wanted to remind you that dedication and discipline are really important skills to develop in your life in general. And debate can teach you that in the same way that a sport can, right? So when I think of dedication... I don't just think about debate. I think about the fact that the, this is like my 15th video in a row. I'm a goddamn much and have a nice night.